Hi, this is Hans, and today I'd like to show you a, a project that I did. Uh, I built a iron mine uh, in HO scale, and I'd just like to walk you through some of the highlights of how you go about doing a project like this. Uh, this mine is the Newport mine. It's located. It was located in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan on the Gogebic Iron Range, and to do a project like this, uh, it's kind of a number one thing is you have to have some interest, obviously, in in, uh, in doing something like this because if you don't really have a strong uh, interest in doing it, it's going to kind of seem like uh, like work instead of uh, something that you enjoy doing. So this mine, uh, first thing you do with the research is to get some photos. And I got uh, several photos of this mine from the uh, uh, Ironwood Historical Society in uh, Ironwood, Michigan, where this mine was located. Uh, I'm just going to show you a few of them, and then we can talk about how you go about turning this into a, a model. So this is an overview of the mine. Uh, the shaft house is on the left. Um, the engine house is on the right. And the engine house basically had the machinery for hoisting for the hoist cables which went down into the mine and brought the skips or the uh, cars up and down the shaft. Here's another view of the mine uh, from a, another direction. A lot of these photos were from the U.S. Bureau of Mines uh, and they took photos of as part of their uh, work. They took photos of a lot of the mines in the area. Here's another view. Uh, when you when you want to dimension something from a photo like this, uh, it's nice to uh, just have a method of doing it. What I do is I use uh, dividers like this and then you pick a dimension like on the uh, on the edge of the photo right here, there's a, uh, a building, and it has an overhead door. So if you get a dimension of the overhead door, and you know it's 7 feet, you can extrapolate that dimension to get the height of the, the shaft house, the size of the windows, and other key dimensions like that. So this is a handy way to do that. Here's another view of the mine from the opposite direction. The engine house uh, was steam powered. Those ore cars you see in the front ground and the foreground were uh, back loads from the iron ore being taken to the uh, ore docks on Lake Superior and they brought back coal to fire the uh, boilers for the steam hoist. This is a view of the ore pile or stockpile. In the winter when the uh, Great Lakes shipping season came to an end because of the ice in the Great Lakes, they stockpiled the ore for shipment later in the spring. Uh, this is a nice photo because it, it has a lot of contrast uh, being a winter scene like this. So you can see the uh, details of the structure of the, uh, of the tram system there on the ore piles. Another view. Um, what you see there in the fore, in the foreground is a shovel. That's a steam operated shovel. And in the background you have the maintenance shop. And to the left of that, the hoist house. Another thing, when you take these dimensions, I like to just print out on paper, uh, copy the photo. And if you can make it with your enlarging on your... Uh, on your printer just try to get it to HL scale so you can just get the dimensions directly and then write write down dimensions or or information on windows and such on the, on the paper itself and then you have a ready uh, list of what you need to to get for doing the project now I'm going to give you a view of the overall project here as like as I recently completed it, um, as you remember from the prototype photos, there's, a, there's an ore stockpile, the 
represented here. Uh, this model of the stockpile is made out of uh, foam board insulation uh, layered and then sprinkled with uh, actual iron ore. And uh, I use a uh, matte medium type material from uh, Hobby Lobby called Mod, Mod Podge. And it works real well, it's pretty reasonably priced and it holds the ore in place. Uh, around any of these uh, stockpiles in real life and prototype, there was always a lot of debris that was brought up from the shaft. Uh, timbers, cable, rail, and, and just stuff that got got caught up in the in the transfer of material down from below the mine and got brought up to the surface and dumped on the on the pile. So I kind of represented that because that's something I basically saw when I uh, researched the actual area and went on the on some of the remaining ore piles there. Scanning around, see some other view of the, of the mine model. The uh, uh, maintenance shop that you saw in the prototype photo, that's in the background there. And the maintenance shop was, what you would think, is where they repaired all the equipment. Um, the tram cars, the electric motors, uh, air tools, um, just general general maintenance. And here you see the, uh, the shovel. It's a Kibri model, and it's uh, I painted it to kind of represent the Cyrus Erie colors. Another uh, aspect of the research was uh, it, it's always helpful to get some first-hand information about it. In my case, I met a fellow that worked on the railroad in the Gugubic Iron Range from 1938 to early 80s. And he's 92 years old. He has a very sharp memory. And he was able to tell me a lot of the details, which... Otherwise, he would not be able to, to know about. And he described the operations and how the, how the, uh, the daily jobs worked going up to the mines. So that was really, really interesting to talk to him about that. So the typical operation up there uh, in the... In the summer months, uh, trains would go up to the mine and they'd be spotted at the uh, ore piles and the shovel would, would load, the, load off the ore piles, load the trains that, were, that had that job up there to spot cars. So my friend said that this was probably one of the better jobs you could have up there because you would just go up there with a caboose and while away the day or the shift just spotting cars for the shovel. It was a nice job to have. Another job that the train crews had would be uh, to pick up loads and empties uh, from the stockpile or from the uh, from the tipple. So it was a gravity operation, as you could tell by the background there. There was like some more cars spotted under the tipple, and by gravity, it was sloped in one direction so that the uh, releasing the air would. Uh, I mean, uh, putting air to the cars would allow the cars to roll under the uh, loadout as they were loaded. In the foreground is uh, the section crews from the railroad uh, would be called upon to move the track every once in a while so that the uh, uh, 
as the as the stockpile diminished in size, they would need to load the track so they had better access to the pile. And so what they did is uh, the section crew basically was an arm strong operation to get seven or eight guys with pry bars on the rail section and and just move it over, muscle it over to where they needed it. One of the other auxiliary type of loads that would come to the mine would be cabling. They had to replace the cable or supplies like timbers, uh, explosives and that type of thing. To the right you see the uh, uh, the pulley wheels which changes the direction of the cabling. So you went from a vertical, cable, the cable was vertical in the mine and it changed direction up at the uh, at the head frame there. Cabling came down across structure to stabilize the cable, pulley wheels, idler wheels, and then changed direction again to go into the, to go vertically or horizontally into the engine house. They put a lot of strain on that uh, that pulley system, so they embedded it in concrete. Here's a view of the the shoring uh, stockpile. Uh, that was used underground, of course, to hold up the roof. That would also be brought in by rail. A couple miners there. Now, iron mining in particular is a very dirty job because it's uh, iron ore dust kind of coats everything and stains everything. As I found out, even just going up and walking around the piles, you get all full of that iron ore dust and it's hard to wash out. So, these guys were always covered in red dust. Got a picture of some miners emerging. They're under coming off of the shift and getting ready to go into the dry, which was where the showers were located. We call it a dry because they would hang up their clothes up in the, uh, off the ceiling on chains to let it dry out from all the water below ground. But as you can see there, that, that iridescent sheen from the iron ore, I mean, it was just hard to get out. There's a couple more miners down there. There's the electric motor that would run underground, bring uh, tram cars up to the surface or running down below. There's the, uh, the frame, the cables. Represented the power supply coming in, high voltage coming in, and a step down transformer, stepping it down to 480. Now, this is kind of a overall, the scene is I'd say tw uh, 24 inches by 5 feet, 6 feet. And it looks like a lot of work, and it is a lot of, well, not work, but um, it's, it's really not that difficult if you just do everything in small increments. You know, one day you say, oh, I'm just gonna I'm just do this stockpile or and just focus on one thing and pretty soon you got it looking like something. So I'd encourage you to give a project like this a try. I mean, whatever would be that interests you, like if you'd like to maybe do a bridge or you know, your fam family's house or anything like that. If, it's, if you have an interest, it really it really goes pretty pretty quickly, I would say, and gives you a lot of satisfaction. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for my next video, which is going to be on building a swamp.